Hello everyone, this is the Algebra 1 Regents that was given on January 24th, 2024. We're going to get right to part 1. Number 1, the graph below represents a dog walker's speed during his 30 minute walk around the neighborhood. So, we look at that graph, it is not going up a hill, there's speed on the side, you have to remember speed right here this is miles per hour and this is time in minutes so which statement best describes what the dog walker was doing during the 12 to 18 minute interval of his walk so let me just go up to the graph again and 12 to 18 minutes is right here just realize that if you look at this the y-axis this speed is a constant speed just think of this as like say one miles an hour this is 1.5 miles an hour and from 12 to 18 he's remaining at that 1.5 mile an hour miles an hour he was walking at, at a constant rate and yes, it's a constant rate. And I'm just going to put down that he was walking at 1.5 miles per hour. He's not increasing his speed. He wasn't decreasing his speed. He wasn't standing still. So all of those are out. Number two, given the relation... Uh, 0, 4, 2, 6, 4, 8, and then x7. So we're just going to take a look. Which value of x? They're just talking about x. Which value of x will make this relation a function? Remember, every x must have its own y. So if you put the 0 in here, it would be 0, 4, and then 0, 7. That would not be a function. 2 can't go into 2, 7, and 2, 6 it would not make that a function. The x is repeating. 6 could go in, and that means this would be a perfect fit for 6, 7. Every x must have its own y. So every x value must have only one y value. So that's why you could put 6 in there, and that would work out. Number 3, speedy jet ski rental company charges an insurance fee and an hourly rate the total cost is modeled by this function right here this is very important based on this model which statements are true all right so r of x represents the total cost that is true remember r of x that is a um it's like the y and y is always representative of the um the total of anything so x is the number of hours rented let me see so if it if they have the total cost is this right here this is an hourly rate the 40 the x is the hour it is true Forty dollars is the insurance fee. No, this is the hourly rate. So that is false. Thirty dollars is the hourly. No, thirty dollars is not. It's the insurance fee. So that is false. The only two that are true are one and two. So two is your answer. The 11th term in the sequence right here is, they give you the first terms, so it's 3, negative 6, 12, negative 24. So we're going to talk about a sub 1, so I'm just going to put down a sub 1 equals 3, that's the first term. The common ratio, all right, the common difference would mean that you're adding and subtracting we are not adding and subtracting to get to the next term this is more like three times negative two so this might be negative two let's see if that works out 
then negative 6 times negative 2, that's 12. Then 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. So the R, the common ratio, is negative 2. So we're going to look at the reference sheet, and we're going to look for a geometric sequence. So I'm at the reference sheet, and you see a geometric sequence there. It's A sub N equals A sub 1 times R to the N minus 1. And that's what you have to copy down at the other on the page and then substitute the numbers in. So I put right in here from the reference sheet geometric sequence. Remember, it's a geometric sequence because it has a common ratio, not a common difference. A sub N equals A, a sub 1 times the R to the n minus 1. So a sub 11 is the 11 term that we're looking for. So that's the n, the 11 term. So after that 11 term, then you notice that my common ratio is negative 2. So I put 3 times negative 2. And then the n is 11, 11 minus 1. When you put this directly into the calculator, the a sub 11 is 3072 and you put it directly into your calculator that is your answer remember um, number five an exponential growth exponential growth is something that is not a constant so exponential growth not constantly happening not one after another like every month you put in ten dollars ten dollars the first month ten dollars the second month the exponential growth does not work like that. That is linear growth. So adding $10 to a jar each week, that's linear. A pine tree grows 1.5 each year, 1.5 feet. That is linear. Ella earns $20 per hour babysitting. That's linear. Every hour she earns that. And then four has to be the answer. The number of people majoring in uh, computer science doubles anything with doubles or triples um that is an exponential function so four is your answer there for this one you could either do it by hand or you could go ahead and put that into the calculator and match the graphs so by hand you can just go ahead and take away all of the parentheses but just remember the second set of parentheses you're distributing this negative negative. and if you're distributing the negative that becomes a negative 4x squared this becomes a negative 5x and this becomes a positive 2 because negative times a positive is negative and negative times a negative is positive so now we just go ahead and combine like terms this negative x squared and a negative 4x squared is negative 5x squared. This 3x and this negative 5x is negative 2x. And then negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. So 2 is your answer and that is it. So remember calculator works also put it into this into y1 and then put this put each one in as you go and match the graphs calculator and match it works all of the time number seven um f of x equals x squared which which function is a result of shifting and we are just going to go shifting f of x three units left and two units down so the first thing you do is grab your calculator press y equals and i don't know why i deleted that because that's exactly what i needed x squared x squared is known as the parent function so we want a function that goes three units left and two down so just so you know um this goes three down and i shouldn't have everything is compared to the parent function you see how x squared right there is uh y1 that's my 
parent function. So everything is compared to that. So they want to move that parent function three to the left and two down. I know this is three down. I know this is three up. All right. It's kind of like the Y intercept, but not really. But you can think of it that way. Um, this is two down minus two. And this is two up. And that's plus two. So I'm going to try the one, two down. So I'm going to put right here y equals, and I'm going to press down, and there's my x plus three in parentheses, and that is my squared minus two. Let me try that again. x minus three squared minus two so i need this to go three to the left and two down and let's see if it does three to the left and two down no well oh, i put it in the wrong way it's x plus three not x minus three x plus three is three to the left and then two down let's see if that is correct now three to the left and two down that is the answer right here this is three to the left and two down so three is your answer for this one a literal equation remember you have to solve for what they want so this is the equation to find the velocity where u is the initial velocity, v is the final velocity, a is the blah, 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 and s is this. When the equation is solved for a, all right, so I'm going to first just write this all over again. It's v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So the first thing I'm going to do is move this u squared over to the other side because... I need to get that a alone. So this cancels and you have v squared minus u squared equals 2as. Now that 2as is attached by multiplication. If it's attached by multiplication, it is easily broken up by division the inverse operation. So I'm just going to go 2s and the 2 cancels, the s cancels. And then you have v2, v squared minus u squared over 2s equals a. And that is number 2. All right, a two-way table, Mrs. Smith's math class surveyed students to determine their favorite flavors of soft ice cream. Of the students who preferred chocolate, approximately what percentage were seniors? So, first off, you just have to add 42 and 67. And that's 109. So I highlighted the chocolate column and I added up those numbers. So all the people that like chocolate, 109 people. 109 people that like chocolate. So of the people who like chocolate, how many, what percentage were seniors? So seniors makes up 67 of the 109 that like chocolate. Now I grab my calculator and it is 67, clearing that out, 67 divided by 109. And I can press enter. I have 0 0.6146. And let me go see what they wanted round it approximately. So this right here, you're going to move this decimal over two places. So that's 61.5%.
rounded to the nearest tenth, its approximate four is your answer. And that is that one. Okay, so this question always comes up and a lot of people get confused. I, you could either substitute this number here in the parentheses. That is your X value. So here's your X value. That's your input. You're putting that number into for the, to the X and the same thing here. So if you have F of one, In that first f of x, obviously, it is 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 1. So 1 plus 2 plus 1. So the f of 1 equals 4. And then you go 3, substitute the 3 in uh, to your g. Let me erase that. G of 3 is 3 times 3 plus 5. So G of 3 is 9 plus 5. 9 plus 5 is 14. They want you to subtract them for minus 14, and that's negative 10. And that's how you do it by hand. You could put this directly into the calculator. The calculator will give you all the answers. That was an easy one to do by hand. Um, so whichever way you don't whichever way you want to do it is fine uh the largest y intercept just remember when zero is the x the other number is the y intercept so two is your b here the y intercept for this this is b b equals one this right here is b b equals three and this right here is your b, b equals negative 1. The largest y-intercept is the this one. And that is it. Nice, easy question. Two texting plans are advertised. Plan A has a monthly fee of $15 with a charge of $0.08 cents per text. Part Plan B has a monthly fee of $3 with a charge of $0.12 cents per text. Um, if T represents the number of text messages in a month, which inequality we use to show plan A, the cost of plan A, is less than the cost of plan B. All right, so plan A has to go first. So plan A has a monthly fee of $15. That's this, 15. And then the plus to this right here is less than plan B has a monthly fee of three. This, this is the answer. That's it. All right, this is greater than, and that would be plan A. That's out. Um, this is plan A. That's less than, but they have the 15, the monthly fee with the, with the T. That's out, and that's out. <laughs> this is greater than also. All right, number 13, number 13 is function, they graph it. What's the axis of symmetry? Just remember the axis of symmetry must have X equals. I put down a little information there. Uh, draw a dotted line in the middle. So I'm going to draw a dotted line right here. And that is my axis of symmetry. Let me move that over. My axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. That's this right here. x equals negative 1. And that is it. Axis of symmetry. So... The question number 14, again, they ask it so much. What is the degree of the polynomial? It is the largest degree, the largest exponent. So 
So I'm going to highlight the largest exponent. The largest exponent is this. So what's the degree? It's 3. And that was 14. So we're talking about product here. You could do this in the calculator if you would like. Or you would do it by hand. So calculator. and match or by hand so I'm gonna do it by hand right now because this is pretty easy remember it's distributive property x times x that's x to the third x squared i'm sorry that's x squared times x and then x squared times negative three is negative three x squared then you have three x times x that's positive three x squared and then you have three x times negative three and that is negative nine x this is positive nine x and 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. So we have a lot that cancels out. This cancels, this cancels, this cancels, this cancels. X to the third minus 27 is your answer. And if you put that into the calculator, they would have equal graphs. I just wanted to show you what I was talking about. I have both of this. I have the, answer, the question right here in Y1. And Y2 is the answer. If I press graph, you could see that there's a blue line and a red line. But again, you could go to the table and you could see exactly that all of the values, all of the values are all equal. So that means that you have the answer. If you put this in number two and number three, number four, they will not match. And you know that those are not the answer. So I wrote the equation again, and now I just wanted to see if I could uh, distribute the two-thirds and make it nice and easy to do. Two-thirds times three is two, but two-thirds times negative two x is four over three, negative four over three x, and you have the three over four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the two from each side here. Um, just going ahead and solving this like I normally would and I'm just going to put let's go 3 over 4 minus 2 and let's see what that gives me it's negative 5 over 4 so negative 5 over 4 just like that and then so I have to get rid of this x right here so if I get rid of that x um, I'm going to do it by, you know, taking just uh, multiplying the reciprocal. So this is negative 3 over 4 times negative 3 over 4. This cancels with this. This cancels with this. X equals 15 over 16. And 4 is your answer. So again, calculator is going to take you home on this one. Um, when I say home, that means it's going to just make you pass the regions. So here we go with y equals, and we're going to we're going to graph in this y equals two x plus six, and then we're going to graph in y two the g of x which is the absolute value. You get to absolute value by pressing math and going to the right. And here's the absolute value. You press one and you go back and you could say, okay, absolute value of X. Let me get out of there. Press to the right. And you can press graph. And you can see that you have a linear function and you have an absolute value graph of a V shape. So now I'm going to press the table function, second function table graph. And then they want to know which value of X is F of X equal G of X. So 
let's go ahead and see if 6 has an X, or has a Y that are equal. No, they're not. When X is 2, what's the Y? Is it equal? No, they're not. This is 10. This is 2. That's out. When X is negative 2, the Ys are equal. That's it. Let me just check negative 6 just to be safe. Negative 6 is negative 6 and 6. No, they're not equal. 3 is your answer. Graph in the calculator. Number 18, number 18, I'm just going to rewrite 2x minus 7 is greater than 2.5x plus 3. I'm going to bring the smaller over to the larger just to stay in the positive. This cancels. Yet negative 7 is greater than... 0.5x plus 3. Then you subtract 3 on both sides. And you get negative 10 on the left side. Is greater than 0.5x. And so now you go ahead and... We'll divide. So you put negative 10 divided by... 0 0.5 is negative 20 is x is less than negative 20 so 4 is your answer for that one all right all right three expressions are written below um and they just want which expressions are equivalent to 8x to the third y to the sixth so you really have to do this really either in expanded notation or you could kind of act like it's distributive property in reverse this is two to the third power that's two times two times two and that's eight and then this x to the first to the third is x to the third and then this right here three uh, y to the second to the third is y to the sixth and so that's good yes so 2x to the third, we're going to do the same thing. This is 2 to the third power, that's 8. x to the third power, y to the sixth. And that is a yes. This one is 2 times 4, that's 8 so far. 8 squared times x, I'm sorry, x squared times x is x to the third. So far, so good. y to the second times y to the third is y to the fifth and that is a no-go so a and b only number 20 joe deposits four thousand dollars into a certificate deposits earns three percent interest compounded annually the value of cd could be used to be in this function just remember this is a growth So that means it's 1 plus R, right? So that means it has to be greater than 1. So this is not 1 plus R. You can cancel that out. You can cancel that out. This is not a growth. No. All right? This is a growth. This is a growth. But it's 3% interest. So you have to change that to 0 0.03. 1 plus 0 0.03 equals 1.03. So 4 is your answer. This one would be a 30% growth. Not 3. So it has to be four. All right, and that formula be found on the reference sheet. There it is. It's one plus. So annual compound interest, 
It's one plus the rate. Remember the rate has to be a percentage as a decimal. So if it's 3%, it's 0.03. It's one plus 0 0.03, and that would equal 1.03. Remember, factored completely, and this is 21, factored completely is one, two steps at least. More than one step. So GCF is really what I go for here first. So they all have an X. So I'm going to, and look, they all have negative X that they take out. Just read it. So obviously, they're going to take out a negative X. So negative X times Y equals negative X to the third. You got X squared. So negative times a positive would be negative, but you need a positive. So it's a negative 10 X. And then again, I'm dividing by the greatest common factor. Uh, to get a positive, you have to have a negative times a negative, and it's 24. So you see what you have. This is trinomial in the middle, and you could go ahead and take it and put, break it down to two binomials. So we have 24, we have to multiply two, and it's a negative, so that means it has to be positive. Negative, 1 and 24, 2 and 12, yes, 2 and 12, you could add those numbers and make negative 10 this would have to be the negative the 12 and this would have to be the positive and that is your answer um three is your answer again you could use your calculator and match the graphs and that would work I did it by hand but I wanted to match the graphs all right when temperature of 59 degrees the speed of sound at sea level is blah 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 1225 kilometers per hour which process can be used to convert this speed into feet per second that's the uh, uh, that's the information that you need. So I'm going to put that here. Feet over seconds. Okay, so we're going to cross cancel the units. So we have km km hour hour mile no miles on the bottom minute to minute feet. miles seconds miles no nothing else. I have miles on the top. No good. KM, KM, hour, hour, let's see, miles, miles, minutes, minutes, feet, over second, yep, that's what I want, two is your answer. Zeros, so the zeros are the x intercepts zeros x intercepts the solutions so we have to have three so you could just go ahead and put these in your graph uh graphing calculator and just see where they cross the x axis and that's it or you could do it by hand you could set each binomial equal to zero but i'm just telling you if there's a negative two four and a zero that means this one or this one these are not x equals zero so if you have an x equals zero for this one and an x equals zero for this one it could be either one of the two then you have x plus two equals zero and you solve for x it's minus two minus two and you get x equals two negative two that's what you wanted and then you'd go x 
minus 4 equals 0. You add 4 on both sides, and you get x equals 4. That's correct. So 3 is your answer. Set each binomial equal to 0 and solve for x. So that would be this answer, this answer is what you need, and that answer. And those are your zeros by hand. What's the range of this function? Remember, range equals, range is the y, the y values. Right? So we're going to put this in the calculator. And we are going to look at what the range is. So let me clear this out. And then we have x minus 4 squared and then plus 1. So I'm going to graph it and I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, okay, this looks right here that the negative 1, you see this, this positive 1? We're only talking about the range, so we're only looking at the y-axis. So that means this right here is the lowest the graph, the parabola goes. And if you look at the table of values, you see 1, and then it goes up again. So 1 The range is not o, is not x. That's out, out, not x. E. Ever. It's not equal to x. So that's out. This is y. Y is greater than 1. Or y is greater than or equal to 1. It includes the 1 as the range and we saw that in the table so part 2 students um, you just basically have a recent test scores are shown below 25 this is part 2 the first of the open-ended and they want to create a dot plot so we will 85 put a dot of course, it both. 90, put a dot. 90, put another dot. 92, put a dot. These are going by ones, by the way. 96, put a dot. 88, 86, 87, 88. 87, 96, second dot. 92, Second dot. 95. First dot. 96. Third. 85. 82. 85. 82. 92. 90, 88, 6, 8, 7, 8, 8, 85, 4 dots for 85, 87, 6, 7, I'm just going to count, there's 20 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, we are good to go, you have your first open-ended question correct or oh, state the median for the test score they didn't want to get you know you could put these uh it was just too easy to dot plot i guess um so we have all of these numbers i'm going to erase them and this is what median if you do it by hand the median is kind of easy for The median is kind of easy to do, but you could also put these all in a list and it in the calculator gives you the median. Easy way to put this in a list um, is to press stat and then you have edit 
and you're going to go up and I'm going to clear out the numbers and press clear and then enter. You see all the numbers disappear. And you go up to L1 and you press clear again and then you press enter. All those numbers disappear. So now I'm just going to put 85, 90. This is really uh, helpful because the numbers are not in order. And for you to get the median, you have to put the numbers in order. So you might as well have the calculator do it. But one wrong number, 9088, and all of your data is going to be messed up, 85 and 87. And you can see that the calculator is waiting for the 21st number. That means there are 20 numbers in there. Now you press stat and you go to calc and one var stats, press enter three times. And here is your median, 89. Sorry for the yawn. Median. Equals 89. All right. So very simple. You're just going to put this into the calculator. And... You have two, second function, radical three, press to the right, plus six, and you're going to get that. So I'm going to put two, square root of three, plus six, equals 9.4641, dot, dot, dot. And I'm going to say this is irrational because it is a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. And that's it. So the table below shows the data from a recent car trip. State the average rate of change. Just remember, average rate of change is just the rate of change for a specific hour that they tell you. Hours. So hours two. So right here, we have to use that. And they said that we have to use four. So I'm going to put two comma one twelve average rate of change. And I'm going to put four comma two thirty eight. On the top, I'm going to put X one, Y one, X two y2 and the slope formula i'm going to write that down y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 m equals and i'm going to put 238 minus 112 and i'm going to put 4 minus 2 and i'm going to grab my calculator And I'm going to press alpha X and I'm going to go 238 on the top in the numerator minus 112 over the denominator of 4 minus 2 enter 63 M equals 63 put this down 63 miles per hour. All right, it's 27. Here is 28. We have to graph on the set of axes below. Axis below. Um, you have, let me just get this down to that. 3y, you have to graph this, uh, graph the equation. 3y plus 2x equals 15. Not bad. 
So if I got rid of the highlighter, that would be good. 3y on the axis below, we have to graph this so it is not an inequality. We are talking about just an equation. So I just re I rewrote it, and you're going to solve for y. Subtract 2x on both sides. This is 3y. And this cancels equals negative 2x. I always put the x first. Doesn't matter. Divide by 3, divide by 3. And then you have y, this cancels, equals negative 2 over 3x plus 5. So you could grab your calculator, or you could do this by hand. Um, the y-intercept is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You could put it in your calculator. It's a negative slope. It's going to go down 2, 1, 2, and to the right 3. Down 2, to the right 3. Down 2, to the right 3. The reason why I'm getting that is the slope is negative 2 over 3. That's a rise going down. It's negative to the right and then b equals five that's how i'm doing this by hand then up two to the right three notice all the points are perfectly aligned so now i just go ahead and connect those points just like that don't forget i'm gonna put the, mess with the property a little bit make it nice to put arrows on the end of each of the line and then we're just going to label it y equals negative 2 over 3x plus 5 and we're going to answer that last question explain why negative 6 9 is a solution to the equation negative 6 let's see 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 9 which so this is the negative 6 9 that they're talking about negative six nine why is that a solution and that is my explanation negative six nine is a solution because it falls on the line it satisfies the equation all right use the quadratic formula get the quadratic formula from the reference sheet x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So it says to use the quadratic formula, so that's why I got that right there. But even if it didn't say to use that, I'm going to use it anyway. It says to round to the nearest hundredth. The quadratic formula always works. When there's a coefficient that is greater than 1, um, I'm going to the quadratic formula all the time. A equals 3, B equals negative 2, and C equals negative 6. This is my A, this is my B, this is my C. So now I am just going to go ahead and substitute in. If they want a negative B and my B is negative already, that is a positive, plus or minus, square root negative 2 in parentheses squared makes a difference minus 4 times 3 times c which is negative 6 all over 2 times a which is 2 times 3 which is 6. now you go and you will split that up but you could just go ahead and do that in your calculator you don't have to worry about anything As far as the work goes, um, I'm just going to put 2 plus, I'm going to do the plus side first, square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 6, and then it's all over 6. And then I press enter, and you get 1 point, so x equals... And you put a squiggly equal sign, it is rounded to the nearest hundredth, so we'd have 
sorry, 1.79, because that 6 is going to make that a 9. And then x, and then the other side, so we're going to do alpha x, and we're going to do 2 minus now the square root of negative 2 <coughs> squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 6 all over 6. And then you press enter. And you get negative 1.12. Those are your two answers, rounded to the nearest hundredth. And that is the only work that you have to show. That's it. All right, piecewise function. State your value of f of x or f of 3. Right here is your input. So since 3 is not greater than 3, and it's this one right here, you have to use this. Justify your answer. So f of 3 equals negative 3 and in parentheses squared. Actually, we're going to put this 3 squared. Negative is on the outside. You see that negative right there? You put the 3 squared in um, and then plus 15. So this becomes negative 9 plus 15. And then f of 3 equals 6. All right, so it says 31. Express the equation x squared minus 8x equals negative 41 in this form right here. So th I, when I see this form, I have this on my mind. Complete the square. Completing the square. So I'm just going to go, okay, so I have negative 8, and I'm going to divide it by 2. I get negative 4, then I get negative 4, and I put that in parentheses squared, that's 16. So then I have x squared minus 8x plus 16. Oh, that's nice. Plus 16 equals negative 41 plus 16. So I need that format, so I'm going to go ahead and put x minus 4 times x minus 4 equals negative 41 plus 16 is negative 25. And then I'm going to have x minus 4 squared equals negative 25. And that's my final answer because they want it in this format. And that's it. All right, number 32, factor completely. Here we go again with this factor completely. So I'm going to look for GCF. That's what I do every time it says factor completely. I think 4, like, goes into 36. So if I go 36 divided by 4... I know it's 9. Um, that means 4 is coming out. I factor complete nine, 4 times 9 minus x squared. And you see inside that parentheses, I have the difference of squares. Right? So now I have 4. I'm going to bring that down. 3, 2 binomials and a plus and a minus x and x. So 3 times 3 is 9, x, uh, 3x times negative x, 3 
x times 3, those cancel out, and x times negative x is negative x squared. So this is your final answer. Factor completely. You're done. And that's it. 33, part 3. While playing golf, Laura hit a ball from the ground. From the height and the feet of a golf ball can be modeled by this. Graph it. All right, so it's graph it below. So that means I'm going to put that right into my calculator. I'm going to grab my calculator. And I am going to press clear. I'm going to press y equals. I'm going to press clear again. I'm going to put negative 16 x squared plus 48 x. And I'm going to press graph. And guess what? That right there is above the screen. So if I want to extend my screen, I'm going to press window. And I'm going to go to the Y max. And I'm going to put 100. Then I'm going to press graph. Eh, it's okay. I want to see it a little bit more, so I'm going to put 50. And that's a little bit better for me. So I'm going to press second function table. And, and then I'm going to start graphing. Uh, one thing that I do want to show you, you see how these go by halves? All right, this is like a half. This is one and a half. I, I'm just going to change my my calculator to halves because I, I want to see, um, and it, you press second function table set, and you see this, uh, this triangle, and it says table equals one. That means the table goes by ones. And if the table goes by ones, it doesn't match exactly what I want to see. So I'm just going to say 0.5, or you can put a half in. Um, and then you can press second function table and you can see it goes by 0.5s. You're obviously going to start with zero. So that's zero, zero. And I'm going to put a point right here. Then I'm going to go back up to the, to the graph and it says 0.520. So 0.5 and this is 20. See how nice and easy that is? And this is 132. 132. Nice. And 1.536, 1.536, that's really good. 232, 232, and 2.520, 2.520 is right there, and then 30. So when you're drawing it, I'm going to try to draw it a little bit better than what I usually do. That is the vertex right there. And that's it. Right. It's a little bit off, but it's okay. Looks pretty bad, but it's all right. All right, what's the maximum feet? What's the height, maximum height in feet of that the golf ball reaches? Um, now you can see it. The maximum is one and a half. It's 36 feet. Is that a lot? I don't, I don't really think that's a lot. Right? I mean, I don't golf, but 36 feet maximum height. It's golf ball. It's not that good. How many seconds does it take the golf ball to hit the ground? That's three seconds. That's not good. Three seconds. It's not a good 36 feet. It's like mini golf. Um. All right. So that's it. 34. They will always have a question like this. So just remember, when you do reset your calculator, if you reset your calculator, once you do reset it, remember, it's second function memory, and then 7, 1, 2, and that's RAM cleared. That's reset. 
Now the first thing that you should do is press the mode button right there and go down to stat diagnostics. You see that stat diagnostics is off. Well, you won't get the correlation coefficient if the stat diagnostics is off. So you press it on and that's it. You start the test. Um, for a question like this, you need to put this into a, into your list. So you press stat, enter, and I have a list in there from before. I cleared it out. And then you just go ahead, put three, one, six, <coughs> six, seven, six. So there's five numbers. Let me just check one, two, three, four, five, then 500. 410. No. Go over to L2. Over to L2. 500. 410. 620. 720. And 500. And the numbers match. There's five in each. Now you press stat, go over to calc, then go down to four. Press four, and then press enter five times. Here's all of the information that you need. All right. So it's asking for this linear regression equation. What is the, what is the state the linear regression equation for this? And then round all values to the nearest let's do that 100 so right there let me just make this a little bit bigger see that's your slope it's y equals ax plus b don't know why the calculator does that it's 40.48 so 40.48 x <gasps> And then this is 363.81. That's it. The correlation coefficient rounded to the nearest hundredth is the R. So 0 0.84. And then they always ask that third question. What is the core state with the correlation coefficient indicates about the linear fit of the data? <coughs> okay, sorry about that cough. So this is really what the correlation coefficient indicates about the linear fit of the data. There is a strong positive correlation between the number of prep classes attended, AX, and the math SAT score why so i put down the um the graphic that i made uh for this and if it's a negative one closest to a negative it's a very strong negative negative 0.8 it's a moderately negative they never ask it um but if it's negative 0.5 and closer to zero it's a weak negative it's called a weak negative um and 0 0.5 to zero is a weak positive Right, so you just know the moderately positive, I, I never really even seen them ask it. So this is still a strong positive correlation between the X and the Y. All right, so just to uh, just review that. Number 35, Julia is four years older than twice Kelly's age. Julia is four years older than twice Kelly's age X. So I like to write down the X. So Kelly, that's the X. Um, Julia is four. So Julia is four years older than twice Kelly's age. Twice Kelly's age plus four. And that's Julia. The product, that means multiply, of their ages is 96. So what we have here is just x times 2x plus 4 that's the product equals 96 so that you get credit for 
right there. So now it says determine the uh, Kelly's age algebraically. So that's a little tricky. So I'm just going to rewrite that. And I'm going to do distributive property. So this is 2x squared plus 4x equals 96. I'm going to subtract 96 from each side because I needed to set it equal to 0. And it becomes a trinomial. Once it's a trinomial, let me get this down. This is 2x squared plus 4x minus 96 equals 0. Now it looks like if I want to factor that, guess what I'm going to use? The quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus, get it from the reference sheet, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So my a equals 2, my b equals 4, and the c equals negative 9. So my x equals negative b, which is negative 4, plus or minus square root of 4 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times 2. No, I'm going to put this into the calculator, so I'm just going to do negative 4 plus, and then I'm going to put square root of 4 squared. Let me just put this down here, minus 4. times 2 times negative 9 all over 4, 2 times 2. I press enter, I get that. I made a mistake there, I had, 90, I had 9 down, it's negative 96. All right, and that's the reason why I was coming up with that. Because remember, when you're solving for something like this, you're solving for someone's age. So that's how I knew it was incorrect because now, see, look, six. You can't solve for someone's age and get a decimal that goes on forever. So x equals six. So Julia is six. But let me go and if I put in negative four, and I'll show you um, negative four minus the square root of four squared, minus 4 times 2 times negative 96 all over 4. Notice that it comes to a negative 8, and negative 8 is, you can't, it's not a possible answer because you can't be negative years old. So the negative part you'll throw away, and the 6 is Julia's age. So Julia is six years old. So the other one was negative eight, and let me just cross that out. Okay, negative eight, negative age can't be. So Julia is six years old. So we have, uh, I'm sorry, Kelly is six years old. Kelly is six. Julia is two times six plus four. So Julia is 16. So now the difference is 16 minus six is 10. And that's that.
Both of these inequalities for number 36 have to be solved for y. So I'm just going to move this y. I'm going to add this y to this side right here. And I'm going to just cancel this out. This is 2x is greater than y plus 4. And then subtract 4 on both sides. And then you get um, 2x minus 4 is greater than y. y is less than 2x minus 4. Then this side minus x on both sides. This cancels. You have 3y is greater than negative y plus 6. You divide by 3. You get y is greater than negative 1 third x. This is an x. Plus 2. When you graph these, you put them in the calculator. Let me just show you how to put those in the calculator. Press Y equals, and then go to the left. You press enter, and then you're going to go down. The first one we're going to graph is Y is greater than, greater than. So greater than is the arrow pointing up. You go to OK, and you press enter. And then you go to the Y equals, and you're going to press alpha X. Negative 1 over 3 X plus 2. And you press graph. You notice that the line is going down from left to right. It's a negative slope and you're shading up because it's greater than. I'm going to do this by hand anyway, but that's how you do it in on the calculator. So we have a y-intercept of 2. So that's the 2 right here. And then you go down 1. Because this slope is negative 1 over 3. Down and to the right. And then the B equals 2. So it's 1, 1, 2, 3. 1 down, 1, 2, 3 to the right. 1 down, 1, 2, 3 to the right. Again, you could look on your calculator. I just find it easier to do by hand. And then... Um, this is a greater than symbol, so that means we are going to graph a, make a dotted line. Dotted for greater than and or, or less than. And then shading above because it's greater than. So I'm going to shade that above. Just like that. The next line I already solved. So is y is less than. So I'm going to grab my calculator again. And I'm going to go to the y2. And it's less than this time. So I'm going to press enter, go to the left, press enter, go to the right, that's greater than that. Pressing to the right one more time is less than. You go down to OK, you press enter, and you're going to graph that. Y is less than 2x, that's a positive slope, minus 4. And there is your double shaded area you see it right here that's the solution set so we have a slope and again i'm just going to do this by hand but i can look at my calculator my slope is two over one it's a rise of two a run of one and a b of negative four so i'm going to start one two three four and then rise two run one rise two run one look how easy that is Two run one. Down two left. Down two left. And down two left. This is a less than. And again, we have a guess what? 
dotted line. Just so I don't forget, I'm going to label this y is less than negative one third x plus two. And I'm going to label this one, the green one, y is less than 2x minus 4. It's greater than, this is less than, less than is shaded below. So I'm going to just shade it below. Just like this. And there's your double shaded area. See the double shaded area. You're going to put your giant S in that double shaded area. right here and that's the giant solution set is 4 2 part of the solution so 4 1 2 right there 4 2 so yes it's part of the solution set because it falls within the double shaded area and 4 2 is a solution to the system because it falls in the double shaded area satisfying both inequalities that is a graphing inequalities question. Pretty long, too, because you have to solve each one, each of the inequalities for y. All right. So part four, the last question. So let me zoom that in. All right, this one will receive six credits, so you're going to work hard for this question, right? For, so you could get the most partial credit, though. Jim had a bag of coins, number of nickels, and number of quarters, Q, total 28 coins. The combined value of the coins was $4. Write a system of equation that models this situation. First, I'm just going to put down the item equation. It's N plus Q equals 28. Then the combined value. And now the second, the money equation, um, you're going to put down 0 0.5. Sorry. For a nickel, 0 0.05N plus 0 0.25. Q equals four dollars and that is your system of equations use your system of equations algebraically to solve so we have n plus let me move this over because this gives us more space n plus n Q equals 28 and then 0 0.05 n plus 0 0.25 Q equals 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to get one of these to cancel out. Um, and I'm just going to multiply by negative 0 0.25. Again, I could use substitution for it, um, but I'm not going to. So this is negative 0 0.25n minus negative 0 0.25q equals negative 7. And then I'm just going to write down the um, the other equation right below it because I like to see them vertically just like that and you could see that the q's now cancel out 
And that's exactly what I wanted to do to cancel one of the variables out. This right here is 0.2n. Then I'm going to do negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. Divide by 0.2. And we are going to get negative 3 divided by 0.2 is negative 15. And sorry that n is positive. 15 nickels. All right. There. So this right here was a negative, and negative you divide by a negative 0 0.2. You have negative 3 divided by negative 0 0.2, and that is 15 nickels. If you ever get negative, like I did there for a second, um, you know it's not negative nickels, it's positive nickels. You just messed up somewhere, and it's very easy to see exactly what it is that you have to do. So then I'm just going to use the first equation, n plus q equals 28. And then I'm going to substitute the 15n plus q equals 28. I'm going to subtract that 15. This cancels. You have q equals. And it's 13. Thirteen quarters. All right, that's not it because this is a really big question. Jim was given an additional three dollars that made up of equal. Let me just say equal numbers of nickels and quarters. How much of each coin was he given? Justify your answer. So this question is is what you see of it. They, Jim was given an additional three dollars that made up of equal number of nickels and quarters. So it's just an equal number. It equals three dollars. So you could do guess and check, um, and you could kind of do trial and error, where you could see uh, exactly how many uh, nickels and quarters you can get. And remember, it has to be the same amount, and it has to equal three dollars. So I'll start with like ten or something like that. It's ten quarters, that's twenty-five cents. Ten nickels, that's also I'm sorry, ten quarters, that is two fifty. And then 10 nickels, that's 50 cents. So th right there, I have it. So if you, if you think about it, it's 0 0.05 times 10 plus 0 0.25 times 10 equals $3. It does. Um, so if, like, if, if I was answering this, that's exactly where I put equal number, how much of each court, each coin it was 10 quarters and 10 nickels you could also put something like this this is 0 0.05 n and since n equals q right they're saying equal number of nickels and dimes let me just move this over and this is plus 0.25n also because, again, it's not standing for nickels. It's just standing for the amount of whatever it is. This, These are quarters, the number amount. You could even put x. n equals q, right? So it has to be equal to $3. So if you, if you basically add these two together, you get 0.3 equals 3 and then you go like this 0 0.3 and then 0 0.3 and you get n equals 10 so it's it's guess and check and then like you can make sense of it that way also but if you're going to use the guess the trial and error method it's probably best to actually show one that doesn't work 
also. But this is the trial and error where you would have 10 and 10. I just picked 10 because it's just easy. But if you do 8 and 8, it doesn't work out to $3. Remember, it has to have an equal number of nickels and quarters. So you just figure it out like, like this. And you can say, oh, I have 10 nickels. And 10 quarters. And that ends the 2024 region. Um, and I hope that helped out. Uh, just remember, use your calculator. Use the reference sheet. If you're if there's something that you have to look up, especially like quadratic formula, um, anything that is that needed is usually on that reference sheet. Even the slope formula is on the reference sheet. The point slope equation is on the formula is on the reference sheet so it is a good resource first thing you do when you get the regions is to actually just tear off that reference sheet and then keep it in front of you so you know to go back and forth because you might need it for part one as well all right thank you for watching i hope that helped and see you next time